and souls defeated by existence. They would desire its coming instead. As for me, I've only known peace since my death. On that night of carnage and blood, a few steps from here, on Sartine Square, that you people call Victoire Square now, what a night that was. I'm still overwhelmed by the memory of it. My name is Zephyr. You don't recognize it? Not at all? And yet it is mentioned in your history books. And yet it is for you that I and so many others, anonymous, or famous, lost our lives, so many others. Then I will have to refresh your memory and remind you of that historical moment that you cannot remember anymore. Ladies and gentlemen, this evening we're going to perform in the time of the revolution. It was long, long ago, in those days, our country was called, it was called Guadeloupe, as it is today. There were 109,639 inhabitants, 13,969 whites, the so-called Grand Blanc, owners of plantations, sugar refiners, and hundreds of slaves, or merchants trading wine, flour, goods, and slaves. And why not? The so-called petit blanc, artisans, farmers, and owners of one or two slaves. 3,125 free persons of color, artisans, and owners of lands and slaves. 82,978 slaves transported in the holds of ships from the coast of Africa. For on the eve of 1789, the slave trade has become prosperous. And these people, they don't own anything. Not even themselves. For sale, 12 superb, first quality blocks, accustomed in the heaviest labor in works of lifting, digging trenches, digging holes in which to plant sugar cane, felling trees on hills. They're available on a trial basis upon request. France. France was no longer called Gaul. 
That was ancient history. It was France, the kingdom of France. And it had 26 million inhabitants. The aristocracy. 350,000 people who owned lands, castles, real estate, personal property, and servants to serve them from the time that they got up until the time that they went to bed. And the clergy, 120,000 people living in churches, monasteries, rectories, taking away the sins of the world. And then there was the third estate, 25 million men, women, children in the cities and in the countryside. And what exactly is the third estate? Everything. And what has it been up until now in the political order? Nothing. And what, what is it asking for? To become something. Do you at least remember this? You recited it in your schools? Shh, be quiet for now. Our story is about to begin. Splitting your sides while I was kicking and screaming. You're wrong. 
it, it was like when we were little. When I used to see my father, Monsieur de la Salle, kick you senseless because you had to look directly at him into the whites of his eyes. What's the use? Unless you're looking for a martyr's crime. Saint Jean Louis. <laughs> Can a black become a martyr? No, because he doesn't have a soul. <laughs> we have a meeting tomorrow at Noel's place, at St. Anne, under the pear tree. A meeting? To do what? Like last time? To rail against your mean white daddy? Yet yeah, it's my useful to have a white daddy to get your freedom. We got news from St. Domain. The free men of color there want to send deputies to the Estates General. We're going to do the same. And you think the king will allow you to attend the Estates General? You? You who don't even have the right to sit in the same meeting halls and churches as a white you Don't speak against the king! The problem is his advisors who cook up schemes around him at Versailles and who tell him lies about us. The king cannot exclude men who are free, property owners, and taxpayers. Men who are free, property owners, and taxpayers. But we are men. I'm not coming to your meeting, Julian. There's nothing I can do there. You're wrong. Look, as usual, you're not thinking. Look, once the deputies are in Versailles, they'll raise the issue of their the slaves, they'll raise your issue. And you accuse me of the one who was not thinking. The free men of color hate our skin. Those who emerge straight from the womb of a black woman want to forget it. The others have already forgotten. All oh, that's over. Over. We've understood that we have to unite. That it's our union. Yes. Are you? Dreams. People's dreams. Thicker than the hair that grows on their heads. Justice for some folks, unity for others, and happiness for everyone. But alas, people's dreams are not meant to grow free like guinea grass on the banks of the main roads. Some people try to pull them up, to mow them down, to dry them out, to burn them, and to watch them go up in smoke. Consider, gentlemen, that none of your projects and none of your deliberations has the force of law without my special consent. So far, I have been the one responsible for the happiness of my people. Gentlemen, I order you to divide up immediately and to each Go to the chambers assigned to your order. And accordingly, I order the great master of ceremonies to kindly prepare the room. Miracle! Have you heard the wishes of his majesty, the king? Yes, sir. We heard the intentions that the king is supposed to express. But you cannot serve as his voice for obvious reasons. You have no voice or right to speak. Whereas we are here by the will of the people. And we'll only leave at the point of a bayonet. Ha! Dickensons, what are they going on about over there? Words. Fine words. Ha there! Rich folk! French! Meanwhile, the king has called for 20,000 men. All they are waiting is an order, one single order, to level Paris. You are some cowards. We're holding you back from rebelling. Are you going to let them put the better of you? They've closed the stores. Let's dance the carnival. Long live the sound of the cannon. Madame de Tolo, away from me, Madame de Tolo.
conspiring. At this very moment, they're having a meeting. Last month, they had one at Santana. And others have taken place even at Marie Galant. Slaves and free men of color together. You've got to be kidding. Free color together with slaves? Those people can't stand one another. They hate each other like salt hates water. Free colors want to send deputies to the estate general. What? Even we've been excluded. The king did not include representation from the colonies. An oversight that has been corrected thanks to our friends from San Domain. Soon we too will send two deputies to Versailles. How will they be chosen? The mulattoes have friends in Paris. Let's hereby grant free persons of color the same rights, privileges, and immunities enjoyed by those who were born free. Come all, all, or almost all, persons of color are but the shameful fruits of their master's licentiousness. And I demand that on deliberating the totally absurd if the legislatures who pretend to be convinced with them in public morality were to grant the most immoral protection of the practice of concubinage, which is unfortunately already so uncommon in the Antilles. Mulattoes are not true Frenchmen because they have never seen France. The colonies are being overrun by these people. Gentlemen, here you are. All you do is talk. Well, I'm telling you, they're, they're conspiring against you. They swore to kill you all and steal your plantations. Steal our plantations? What they say is true. I have always complied. The desire for freedom stuck in my throat like a bone. In my loins like the desire for a woman. <clears throat> Whatever I did, I couldn't get rid of it. My days were made feverish by it. So I went from slave cabin to slave cabin, and in each ear I whispered, let's rise up and reform. Let's burn down the master's plantation. We'll find ourselves free. <clears throat> now I've conspired too. I've said to the other free colors, what do they have that we don't? I mean, of course, their skin is a little lighter. That's all. They are parasites. We're the ones who run this country. Jean-Louis, Jean-Louis, let's forget our differences. Let's march together against them. So it's true that conspired. Call out the militia. Sun will rise tomorrow. That's 
and how popular memory rescues some from oblivion, from the ingratitude of your memory. Some live forever, and even today, we remember Jean-Louis who died so that there could be tomorrow. Just this morning, I heard his song. Countryside, the peasants have taken up arms. Castles are burning, corpses are piling up. My friends, my friends, the soil that we tread upon is a vast graveyard. And if it's soft and spongy, it's because it's soaked with blood. The dead outnumber the living, and it's their sigh that you hear at night. It's the great fear. So the hearts of some noblemen and clergymen were touched, and that led to the month of August, frenzy, inebriation of renunciation. The National Assembly declares the abolition of the exclusive right to hunting rabbits and pigeons, and the abolition of the status of serf and the practice of memoir under any conditions whatsoever, and the abolition of all seigneurial jurisdiction, and of any tax and civil representative of tithes, and of any rise to deportation and of penal officers, and of the annex taxes. The National Assembly has just decreed the cessation of the special privileges of provinces and cities, and the reformation of oaths made with guilds. Hear, hear, hear. The National Assembly now declares Article I, men are born and remain free and equal. Social distinctions can only be based on their common good. Hear, hear, hear. Gentlemen, don't you see that it's dangerous to permit such things? Dangerous? Why? We're not talking about the slaves from the colonies. Yes, sir. Nor the mulattoes, of course. Even those who are free. Enough! Enough! Perhaps the day will come, gentlemen, when you'll extend your interest further. The day will come when joining hands with the deputies from the colonies, under your deliberation, you will look with compassion upon this unfortunate people who have been calmly turned into barbarian objects of trade. Upon this people, who resemble us in their ability both to think and, above all, to suffer. But sit down, Edgar, sit down! Men are born and remain free and equal in right. Men are born and remain free and equal in right. Men are born and remain free and equal in right. Men are born and remain free and equal Right. <laughs> 
about mulatto. I don't agree. I have two mulatto sons. And you should be ashamed. We're like you, we're silly Guadalupe. I've given them land. I have freed them. They pay their contributions. No, no, no. I'm not asking for any favors. I'm proclaiming their rights as men and citizens. Enough! 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 We want death! We want freedom! The immediate emancipation of blacks would not only be fatal to the cause, it would be the kiss of death for blacks in the state of abject poverty and helplessness to which greed has reduced them. You want death! We want freedom! If you continue, I'll call out the troops again. Wait! Wait! The ship La Jeune Boyenez has just docked at Point Api. It has arrived from Bordeaux, and it brings news that when the king entered Paris, he was presented with a tricolor cockade, and deigned to accept it, and attach it to his hat. The king has accepted the tricolor cockade? Yes, he has. It appears that everyone in France wears it as a sign of allegiance, respect, and love for the person of his majesty. What? As a sign of the union of all French people, and their devotion to their sovereign. What is he talking about? I don't understand. The governor, Monsieur de Cluny, who happened to be a Lemur, has come to Point à Pied and then Bastère to show everyone that he himself is wearing it. The governor has betrayed us. A patriot! He has come patriot! Monsieur de Cluny is wearing the cockade. You should follow his example. Everyone is supposed to wear it. In the cities as well as the plantations. In Point à Pied as well as Bastère. What does the cockade look like? I've never seen one. Oh, it's a horrible claw rag. Red and blue for the colors of Paris, white for the colors of the monarchy. Gentlemen, don't talk that way. For if His Majesty has agreed to accept it, then long live the tricolor cockade. Long live the National Assembly. Long live the tricolor cockade. Long live the National Assembly. Long live the and to any slave caught wearing the cockade will be whipped on the public square. How many times do we need to tell you that none of this concerns you? Now go back to your quarters. Now what do you want? Go home! A free people is a reasonable people. Go home! Go back to your cabins. You have nothing to wait for here. Why the French be back Changed. 
Our men and our women continue to have the taste of freedom in their mouths. Alas, they're still in chains, and the blood of the dead continues to bleed in the silos of the earth. Until finally, in the evening dew, their spirits flutter in the air as fireflies. Be patient with me, for my story isn't over yet. I still have a lot to tell you, a lot, a lot. After, after the days that taste bitter on your lips, the days without joy, the days that are rotten, be patient, for other days will come. I can already feel the winds change. Somebody knew I never Back in again into the black waters of death. 
But I stand here before you, running off at my mouth, running off at the mouth. This isn't the story that I'm supposed to relive with you, no. No, no. I'm supposed to tell you our story as Guadalupians. <clears throat> it leave a better taste in your mouth. It's up to you to decide. Silence. Silence, listen to me. This play has begun, or rather begun again. 1789, no, you already know about that here. 1790, the tricolor flag becomes the symbol of France. 1791, the royal family flees to Beret. <laughs>
more blood. How I would love to tell you stories as bright as a sunny day, as sweet to the tongue as the juice of bourbon and oranges. But alas, men who died without burial, anonymous martyrs, that's all I have to offer you. What loop has been occupied by the English and the French armies have to fight hard. Men and women citizens, I am Victor E., the commissioner of the convention. For the first time, a fleet has headed toward America without bearing the cross. Columbus's fleet had it painted on the sails. Those sails were the symbol of the slavery that would be imposed on the men of the New World in the name of... Uh, excuse me, Commissioner, that, that's not what it's about. We are those without cross, without redeemer, without guards. And we came aboard ships without tackling. Uh, Commissioner, Commissioner, you're losing your mind. Ah, yeah. Ah, but of course, but of course. I must read for you the decree of the 16th day of Pluvius in the second year of the French Republic. <clears throat> the National Convention declares that the slavery of blacks in all the colonies is abolished. Consequently, it decrees that any persons, every person living in the colonies is free. Don't those animals understand anything? It means that you're free. You're free. Leave? Who learned to do leave? Who learned to make leave? Free? You mean to say that we're free? You mean to say that the slaves are free? Not free! We've been waiting for these there for so long! God is free! My God will be free! He won't spend his time calling the Marco Lee for the master's pleasure. He will wear shoes. He will go to school. He will learn to read. He will learn to read music and play the violin. Well, not so fast. Not so fast. First, we have to fight against the English. Those vile satellites of despotism. Join our ranks. All right, let's have some order, men. The men on one side, the women on the other. Men, begin your drill. One, two, one, two. You women will learn to oil and maintain the gun, to sew the uniform, to keep the bed in the infirmary clean. Taking care of the sick is what I know how to do. I'm especially good at getting rid of fevers in the class. English, you're going to to bed. Men and women citizens, you have become 
equal in order to enjoy happiness and to make it the lot of others. He who oppresses his fellow citizen is a monster and must be immediately banished from society. Leave us there! Hadn't we waited long enough for freedom? It was like a new wine that went to our heads, or like a shot of rum that, that made us talk nonsense, that put a fire in us, that made us soar. Those, those were the beautiful days. <laughs> Toussaint Louverture has rallied to the Republic. He frolics on the heights of Neret, at Livia-Croix, at Clotel Picant, at Montagnois. He builds and dismantles white power. The French are eating out of his hands. The chiefs who were slaves, slaves are the backbone of the freedom of the Republic. Republic. Clear that all colonies who do not reside in France or will live abroad without the authorization of the commissioners are immigrants whose properties are subject to sequestration. General, General, stay here. 
Osage Fall, first among blacks, Walimwana. I come from Mir Valley. The plantation you were kind enough to rent to me there bears nothing, neither coffee nor sugar. Now that the slaves think they are free, they don't want to work anymore. How can that be? Walk is a virtue. Anyone caught hiding and wandering will be arrested and punished by law. Get the military commander of your region to help you. General, Savior, Osagio, one name, one. Get to the point. These peasants come from Dondon. They've rebelled. The same has happened in Marmalade, Plaisance, and Limbe, sir. What more do they want? Are they not free? They, Savior, Osagio, I told you to get to the point. Yes, sir. We have I'm getting there, sir. They want the lands to be distributed. What? Distribution of land. Dear Father, the people, land for those who cultivate it. They say that your generals have taken over the whites' property and that they're no better off than under slavery. Sir, no, no better at all, sir. What insolent. They deserve to be. All four men, court men and farmers, who do not diligently fulfill the duty that family imposes on them, will be punished with the same severity as soldiers who fail to fulfill them. Ah, Tucson Abatok, Commander-in-Chief of the Army, have spoken. Father, benefactor, these women say- I no longer want to hear anything. This audience is over. So it goes, so it goes. As for me, I found you saw number two a little frightened. You didn't? Didn't he remind you of anyone? No? Good. Or too bad? Too bad for me, at least. I'm kind of oversensitive when it comes to freedom. He reminded me of, um, his manner was a lot like, no. No one, nothing. Let's, let's talk about something else. About what's going on in the kingdom of, excuse me, what am I thinking about? In the Republic of France. Some people saw the king's execution as a crime. Brittany, the one day the Jerome Revolt War is home. The countryside and the villages are ransacked from top to bottom. The fields are burning, the trees are cut down. In Paris, the convention votes for the formation of the Committee of Public Safety to punish the traitors to the young republic. Before I was mistaken, revolution isn't a woman. It's a witch. A witch, and she feeds off fresh blood. She smears it all over her jaws and then licks it off of her fingers. And then in the colorless hours before dawn, she gives birth to monsters. The hopes of 1789 are so far, far away. This is the reign of terror, which pits royalists against Republicans and Republicans against each other. 16,600 heads were rolled in the gutters, making an average of about 200 heads a week, including Danton's. You remember, he said, execution. Be sure to show my head to the people, for it's worth showing. <laughs> You gotta admit the guy had nerve. <laughs> and stop. So there was Dante, and then Camille de Molin, Robespierre, Couton, Saint Just Le Bossier, because the Republic didn't need no chemists. <laughs> <laughs> and then Andre Chani, for it had no need for poets. And especially poets. And why? What did it have against them? Yes. The revolution, my friends, gives birth to monsters. They say the stories of Puente Pi. Puente la Liberté. What are you talking about? That's how Monsieur Victor Ouse wants us to call it now. The hell with them? Isn't it the same city? Over there, the stores are full of merchandise. How come over here we're dying of hunger? I'm telling you things are worse now than they were before. At least before I had my two pounds of salt pork a week. All you have to think about is your stomach. I'm telling you things are worse now than they were before. Singing the Marseillaise morning and night. 
In the morning, when your eyes aren't even open yet, and the evenings, your body doesn't, can't even stand up, and all you want to do is lay your bones down. Sleep. Sleep. For me, that's not even the worst part. I mean, we're used to working like slaves, aren't we? But now we're working for nothing. For peanuts. And not for everything that they promised to give us. What did they say about a coffee pot? And a cask of sugar? And in the end, we never saw a glimpse of any money at all. At all. And weren't we supposed to be able to make our garden bigger? I asked for a piece of land by the river. They answered me. Wait, citizen farmer. Today I am still waiting. Tell me things are worse now. Not worse. Same. Same old thing. You know, I was wondering, maybe we should go join those up in the mountains. Maybe <coughs> the whites don't screw them. If I haven't done it so far, I'm not going to do it now. You know, I'm not so young anymore. When I was born, the master You don't to... have a master anymore, you understand? You're a free man now. And on top of it, the person you call your master was arrested trying to plead to Mark's knee. And suddenly, he became a little short. <laughs> I can't lie. I've enjoyed seeing all those white heads fall to the ground. As soon as I could, I went down to Point of Pete and I ran around Big Squat Square. And there it was, set up like a guardian angel. Don't say things like that. God is not a show for a Christian. Oh, who's the Christian? You and me. Is that Peter Ross again? Yeah. He's me, all right. But what did you come back here for? Do you miss the smell of the earth? <laughs> but didn't you go off to become a soldier? Yes. I laid out to use arms. I can take aim. I kill a man standing ten steps away. <laughs> You're as crazy as ever. Do you want the soldiers to come back and take us away? What is going on here? On the way, I saw fields lying fallow and sugar cane flying on the stem. Same old misery here, brother. Nothing changed. But tell us about you. Have you killed many whites? Yes. I killed a whole bunch. <laughs> I was at four foot to be. I called peace out my life, but I defended myself. I was drunk with blood. Each time, my bullet tore half a brain out or ripped open the chest. I said to myself, take that, take that. That's for going home. Put your hands on the top of Akamabu country. For Vincent. When you broke life upon the wheel, for Serafina when you buried alive. But you were killing Englishmen. They had not done anything to you. They were white, right then? I'll tell you why I came back. He said to man, the slaves have come together like a fingers of an hand, and they forced the whites to respect them. It's not only a matter of them respecting us. They have to share the land with us, the land on which we sweated and slaved, and they have to pay us our wages. I'm going and to tell you. Laura, I don't understand you. You and this, yourself in the past said things weren't the same in San Domingo as they are here. They, they have thousands and thousands of slaves, but we only have a few. Yes, but things have changed now. Now we know how to use arms, and we know where to get them. One slave with a gun is what two, or even three. <coughs> now there are millions of us. What do we need the wise to govern us for? This is our country. Plus. Dreams. Men's dreams. But I told you, men's dreams are not meant to flourish free. They go up in the smoke of stacks of burning wood. You know how to blow in, don't you? You've seen things like this before, haven't you? Ready! Come 
didn't spark. Already Napoleon was breaking through Bonaparte. And through the cracks of the first consul's tight-fitting mask, the face of the emperor was appearing. Oh, Victor Hugo, say what you like. He's the prince of poets, the immortal genius. When I was a child, I wrote in my notebook, I want to be Victor Hugo or nothing. <laughs> yes, Victor Hugo or nothing. Can you imagine that? Me, a little black nobody. But that's what I dreamed. <laughs> You believe me? <laughs> Let's just say that I pulled one over on you. You know, when I closed my eyes, Victor Hugo was very far, far away from opening his eyes. And then again, in, in my day, we didn't dream about poetry or literature or all that meaningless stuff, scholars. <laughs> Dreamed about freedom. Not like you today who dream about BMWs or, or VCRs or vacations to Caracas. No. We dreamed of being free, of standing up straight, straight as a pea of bois. Why am I telling you all this? Oh, yes. I was saying that we're in the year 1802. Listen again to how nice this sounds. The century was two years old. Already, Napoleon was breaking through Bonaparte. Man, I like that. So here we are in the year 1802. And the name of the new strong man is Bonaparte. No one seems to suspect what he's planning. No one is worried. No one has panicked. On the contrary, everyone is acclaiming the young general who transported the oblige to Paris, as if he were some kind of a savior. He took that crazy lady revolution who was beginning to frighten everybody, and he put her in jail, under lock and key. And the middle class, well, they're busy belching and growing bigger paunches. The triumph of that class is assured. Order, order has been restored. Cart. 20, sir! 
Forges complete with tools. Two, sir. Ammunition. 12 pound shell. 633, sir. 8 pound shell. 2072, sir. 4 pound shell. 620, sir. Assorted ammunition. First. 24 pound round cannonball. 3060, sir. 16 pound round cannonball. 3060, sir. 12 inch bomb. 520, sir. 8 inch bomb. 1020, sir. 12 pound encased cannonball. 416, sir. 8 pound encased cannonball. 1,747, sir. Assorted arm. Bonaparte pours thousands of soldiers on Saint Domingue. And he puts in command his bravest officers, including his own brother-in-law, General Leclerc. My express wish is that before long, there will be no way of finding wise man's flesh here, even if it were the sole remedy for the most serious it is. General, uh, the whites have landed. Wait, they have just got off the boat, sir. Please, the whites have landed. Crystal, Desolate, Mopa, mine all the roads, throw dead bodies and horses into the water supply. And he needs to burn everything. Put the pee, put the bra, look out, burn everything. Stop, stop. Read the proclamation of the First Consul of the Republic. It grants blacks the freedom for which they fought so hard. I swear it's true, I swear it. Don't, don't listen to him. Despite the hypocritical and mendacious words of that proclamation, here's the real truth. The colonies aren't earning one red cent. The plantations are deserted. The sugar cane is dying on the stalk. Coffee plants have been consumed by insects. That means one thing. Slavery must be reinstated. Slavery must be reinstated. Slavery must be reinstated. Slavery must be reinstated. Did you hear that? Did you? What? Oh, shh. Ah, uh, but it must be the dream I had last night that's mine. Please tell us your life story. Listen, I dream that... What are you doing there? Don't you know it's forbidden to play for money? Forbidden by who? By the governor of the port. Which one? I'd really like to know how many governors we have. There's Governor Palazzo Point of Pete. Commander Del Grey of Foster. Not to mention... Palazzo, who would like nothing, who would like to become one which is fine by me. <laughs> There's only one governor here. Governor Pelage. <laughs> Don't talk about La Crosse. That man hated our color and could only think of one thing. To enslave us. I want. Right. I want. Give me the money. <laughs> what was that? That's it. That's it exactly. I dreamed that La Crosse came back to La Pointe with hordes of English soldiers. And put us all back into the sugar cane field. If you ask me, that's pretty much what's going to happen here. I'm afraid that this expedition that's approaching doesn't bode well. What's it coming here for anyway? Shall we play another hand? Is your turn to deal with <coughs> Governor Pillage has told us not to work. On the contrary, haven't you seen his proclamation? I've seen it. I've seen it. <coughs> Let's be happy and surrender. <laughs> May the Republic live forever. <laughs> As if the Republic ever cared about the slaves. How can a soldier say that? You deserve 12 bullets. <coughs> do you know what I would like to do to your collage? What? What? Well, leave us in peace with your stories. I know. If you want to go fight, go somewhere else. I heard that in expeditions like the one out on way here, right in Saint Domingue. And they killed all the slaves. It's not the same. The slaves in Saint Domingue are lawbreakers. Governor Pelage said so. Lawbreakers? Lawbreakers? And the whites decided to put the damn irons on your feet. Then we'll see what you think about the law. Yes, 
We'll be ready to go to Fort Delaware in Bacay. Let's go! In this year, 1802, the sound and the fury are deafening. Let's leave the celebrating to those who have something to celebrate. Let them let loose 1,789 balloons in the tri-colored sky. As for us, once again, all we can do is honor our dead. Tired. I go back into my mother's womb and nestle there like a crab inside a hole in the ground. I wish that I could close my eyes and ears and not have to hear any sounds of our world anymore. I wish that I could die a second time. But alas, I have to lead you to the end of this trip backwards in time. And even if it brings blood to my mouth, tears to my eyes, it's my duty to go all the way with you. I heard that the whites are coming to put us back into slavery. Mama, you don't know what you're talking about. Captain Inyas will never let that happen. <coughs> if the whites go with Canada, I can't see what your Captain Inyas will be able to do about it. As long as Captain Inyas is alive, it won't happen. Captain Inyas has said that the way things are now isn't free. He said that as long as a single white, a single European landowner is here, we won't be free. And who does he want to give the plantations to? <coughs> Perhaps to the slaves. All they know how to do is drink, or play cards, or parade around in their soldiers' after. <coughs> Look around in this old village. There's only one single slave, stupid enough to walk. It's me. Papa, is that how you talk about the people of your country? Because General Victor Hugh can kick the English the hell out of here without the slaves. And let me tell you, when the slaves take over this country, it will be a paradise. <laughs> Fortunately, I wouldn't need to see that day. You want me to tell you? Will you let us eat in peace? You never let up. <coughs> Who goes there? Joseph Frank, if you're looking for my aunt, she doesn't leave you anymore. She took her bed to go. Joseph Frank, how's it going? Fine. You have a little child for me? I haven't eaten a bite in three days other than a few bottles. No, I'm not look here looking for my ops. Governor Palaz has given the order <coughs> to go to Point of Peak and suck up to the white general who just arrived. So I've decided to get lost. You don't get it. Not at all. Captain Inyas did that on purpose to test this white guy. And when he figured it out, he got all his soldiers together and left for Lamantan. What are you talking about? Anyway, that's what I heard. The white man put Governor Pelaj in prison. And if Captain Inyas had left, he would have done the same with him. Are you sure of what you're saying? Pelaj is in prison and Inyas is at Lamantan? Well, goodbye, my friends. Joseph, wait for me! Wait for me, I'm coming with you! Wait, stay here! That just a fine never brings anything for me, what you?
General Richo Paz has accomplished his mission. God is with us. Slavery has been reestablished in Guadalupe. I don't give a damn about Guadalupe. It's nothing but a speck of dust, a spit in the sea. What about Saint Domingue? What about Saint Domingue? Yes, yes, General. There are two letters from General Leclerc. Couldn't you have said something sooner? What does he have to say? Read them. <coughs> Citizen Consul, illness is devastating the army under my command. At the present time, the army, which you estimated at 20,000, has been reduced to 12,000. At the present time, 3,600 of my men are hospitalized. Order the shipping of medical supplies to us. This consumption of men is truly frightening. This is not what I wanted to hear. The hell with this. What does the other letter say? Has he gotten rid of those golden Africans? Yes, sir. The other letter. I have had General Toussaint arrested and am sending him to you with his family. He has had Toussaint level two arrested? Finally! Finally! <laughs> you 
asking for refuge, we would share with you in the same way. One day, despite all of this, our country will be independent. Yes, it will be independent. And we will play the fruits of hope and fraternity. Men and women citizens, rather than diminishing our courage, the terrible news that Guadeloupe has been enslaved again only incites our rage to avenge our brothers who have been abused by the whites. Yes, that's the lean you have spoken. Yes. Yes. We will fight till our last breath. What is our rallying cry? And since we all know the outcome of this story, I'll let you judge whether the promises that were made that year were kept, whether the dreams were realized, whether tomorrow still remains nestled in its mother's womb, waiting to be born. My eyes see nothing. Only many, many corpses, many exiles, many prisoners, many, many. It's late. It's time for me to return to my eternal night, to my resting place under the Falau trees, right by the sea. <clears throat> For the sea is my companion. On stormy days, I hear her roar against the rocks. And when the weather is fair, I hear her babbling like a little child. I'll let you get back to your lives. And I'll let you get back to life, to the sun, to the red flowers of the Balicia tree on the slope of the volcano. I bid you all a good evening. Remember me, Zephyr. My name is Zephyr.